so this is just a, a quick video about the repair to a, a still high level hedge trimmer. So basically I borrowed this hedge trimmer, this is the story, I borrowed the hedge trimmer from someone and was happily hedge trimming and all of a sudden it basically, the engine was running but the hedge trimmer stopped uh, oscillating. Um, so I thought okay it's just jammed on a twig but as it turns out it wasn't. Um, the gearbox was really hot so I basically um, thought well let's take it apart and uh, I, I'll show you what I found. So gearbox, so the way this still works is basically you've got an engine at the bottom, this is a high level instrument, so there's an engine at the bottom which drives a shaft up to this point here and this is the point where, you, where the gearbox turns the rotary motion of the engine into an oscillating uh, motion of the cutter. The gearbox is in here, it's very easy to access, I, I think it's a T25 um, Torx um, key you need, so I undid these four screws, sorry six screws and this comes off. Um, so underneath there, there's underneath the uh, plate, there's a there's a plastic gasket of sorts, which is covered in black oil. First thing I found was some bits of metal, which is never a good sign in a gearbox. Um, and then the, on top of that, there's a little metal plate, which is also black, covered this with this thick black grease. It shouldn't be like that. Um, and then there's basically the oscillatory thing, uh, oscillatory parts. I think they're called push rods or so. And the idea is that as this uh, this is the drive, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see a bit better than that. So basically the drive comes up here and rotates this bigger gear wheel and on here there are two offset cams that essentially um, push these push rods back and forth that make the, the blades oscillate. And there's one at the top, one at the bottom, so when I took that out I basically found more bits of metal and these little bits of, uh, well these little things look like mouse droppings but actually they're the roller bearings, so essentially what's happened is the bearings dis totally disintegrated fall into pieces and what you see lying around inside this is bits of metal. So what we need to do is basically um, change these. Um, amazingly, uh, so we're during the Covid lockdown but I went to a local uh, local place called Ron Smith and they happen to not only do they stock them but they have them in stock at a reasonable price, same price as the internet. So I bought these two new ones um, and they cost £21 each including the VAT. And basically, this is the new push rod here. So you've got um, some nice, uh, nice bearings inside there. You can just angle it. You can see that's all brand new. So what we'll do is we'll um, they come with these little little plastic cups, and I think that's probably to stop the bearings falling out. So I want to be a bit ca careful with that because I suspect, unlike lots of roller bearings where they're sort of caged, I think this this might has may have a tendency to fall apart. Fall apart. So we'll put two of those. Put two of those. So forty two pounds in total. This is absolutely a job you can do at home. I would say. So what we need to do is basically um, take all this apart, clean it up, um, and then reassemble. I think I may need to take these the, these out here so that I can get to the bottom uh, the bottom uh, push rod, but I'll, I'm not sure exactly. I'll find out. I've never done this before. And then this is the, the main gear. So what we'll do is we'll clean that up as well. The roller bearings run, ro uh, needle rollers in fact they are run against this surface here, so we just need to be, make sure it's in good nick, but I'll give that a good clean and, uh, and see what happens. So the, uh, so the next problem we've got here is that I think to get the bottom push rod out we need to undo, um, I think we need to undo all of these screws, oh no we don't, we just have to undo two of them. So we're going to undo those two screws um, and then essentially um, this whole blade lifts out, so we're going to do that, we're going to lift that out, that's great. Again, we want to be a bit careful we don't lose anything, so there were basically just two screws we took out, there's one, one that goes there, and one that goes there, and this whole blade assembly lifts out. Again, we'll probably clean the end of this up, because this, this thing here, although there's no bearing here, um, it, this is what runs inside this push rod hole, which is, you know, so we're going to clean all that up with a bit of, uh, a bit of gunk, uh, car engine degreaser. That's really good. That comes out. I was dreading to take all these, uh, all these other, these other ones out. Um, so we won't do that, which is great. So we're going to essentially clean all this up. Um, what I think I'm going to do is, uh, yeah. So this one's totally disintegrated as well. Now we need to be super careful that we don't get any of the grease, so any of the bearing parts down inside here. So what I'm going to do is vacuum clean them out. I'm going to just zoom in a bit more so you can see what I'm talking about. So, so you see all of those little tiny, tiny parts uh, um, there, the, the bearings. I don't know if it's in focus, we'll have to see. Um, anyway, so let's just zoom in a little bit more, see if there's, I'm using a camera I've not used before. 
Let's see if that focuses. Not really. Hopefully that's in focus anyway. So um, yeah, so all these little pieces down here are the, the old bearings. So what we're going to do is clean all that out. Um, I've got a screwdriver here. I'm also, I think I might vacuum it first, actually. Um, there's all sorts of exciting bits of material in here. So yeah, I think, uh, well, I think we'll vacuum it. Uh, so a bit of noise whilst we do that. So this is all quite simple. There's actually another of these metal plates underneath. So we'll take that out. We'll clean all these up in, I've got um, a parts washer. So we'll clean that up. So I think this should be quite straightforward. Again, there's some more bearings that have fallen down into here. So we're just gonna get those out. So I'm just gonna pause the video. Um, I'll give you a, a pan in, I say a wide angle view of all this. So um, we're gonna just move this to a parts washer, wash it all out, and then I'll bring it back. So I'm just gonna stop the vid for a minute. So this is some of the black grease that I've been uh, taking out of the gearbox. It's, uh, it's, it's obviously burnt, it's got bits of uh, metal in it, all that sort of thing. It's just supposed to be a nice uh, creamy colour. Obviously it's never been changed. Um, so I'm scraping out most of the, um, the grease with a screwdriver, first of all, and then I'm going to put in the parts washer. The main reason for getting the grease out first, most of it, is to not contaminate my parts washer fluid. Um, I've cleaned up the other parts. I'll show you all those in their pristine condition in a few moments. Uh, and then we'll try reassembly. Um, and I'll tell you about um, some, maybe, tricks that I've learned about how, so you can get it apart again in the future really easily. Anyway, let's uh, finish cleaning and uh, I'll be back in a minute with the, uh, the nice parts. Okay, so I've basically uh, cleaned up the parts. So these um, little metal plates clean up really, really well. Um, I just basically you put it in a, in a parts washer with some degrease, engine degreaser and a bit of, a bit of rub with some uh, wire wool, fine wire wool, so they're fine. They're in good nick. Uh, the gasket actually is in not bad nick. I cleaned that up, I got the grease off of it. Uh, it seems to still be fine, so I think we'll be okay with that. Um, not quite sure why they made that out of plastic. It's very, very delicate. I don't quite know what it's for. Um, but we're going to just clean that with a Q-tip, so that's a little tip if you want to get the gunge out of the corners. You know, the gearbox is a precision instrument at the end of the day, and any, any, gre any um, particles of grit or metal, and of course there's a bunch of metal in it from when the previous bearing disintegrated, will just um, make it fail prematurely again. So we don't want to do that. Um, so that will clean up really well. Um, we've got the, um, the housing, so this, um, this hardened steel uh, gear is okay, so that cleaned up. Um, I just again went round the edge of that with um, a bit of wire wool. It still looks a bit rough to me, so what I'm going to do is just give it a very fine... Um, I've got a little bit of uh, wet and dry paper here, so I'm going to get some very fine um, wet and dry. Uh, this you can get, this sort of thing you can get from Halfords. It's, uh, it's a 1500 grit. Um, this is really meant for paintwork, but I'm just going to um, paint one of the cars, but I'm just going to use a bit of that and just go around the edge just to make this really, really smooth. Because at the end of the day, uh, this is the other surface that the bearing runs on. So if this is rough, it will soon chew up the, the, bear, uh, the um, needle rollers. So we're going to clean that up a bit more. So I'll do that probably off camera, but basically I'm just going to go around very carefully, sort of almost polishing it up. Um, this uh, housing, so this is obviously where the main uh, bearing disintegrates. So we're just going to clean up again inside here with a Q-tip. And then I'm going to, um, oh, are they called Q-tips? You know, those things for getting the wax out of your ear. It's also good for getting grease out of a, a gearbox. So it's good to get all this out because, you know, I said it's probably never been serviced, this. So it's full of all sorts of particles and anything that may have got in there, wire filings, bits of bearing, all sorts of things. So we're just going to give that a really good clean, all these little chambers here, uh, to make that spotlessly clean. And then we can start the reassembly. Um, the, I don't quite know what this is. It's got a sort of a thing here. Um, looks like some sort of adjustment, but it doesn't appear to have any immediate function. Uh, 
So the bearing is going, the um, cam's going to go in there, and then it gets sandwiched between the two. So we need to make sure these are really clean, these holes, because that's where the um, the cam runs. So this one appears to have a, some sort of bush in there. That looks okay. But we'll grease that again with a Q-tip and grease that one. And the teeth on this look fine. This runs through um, again a a bearing, which hopefully is okay. I don't know how to get that out. Maybe that's another video sometime. Uh, if anyone knows, if it's important to change this every time or frequently, let me know, post it. This is a sealed bearing, so I don't think anything will have gone down in there, which is good. So we'll give this a really, really good cleanup. Um, when I reassemble it, I'm gonna pack it with grease. Now, the guy in the shop, uh, Ron Smith, said, you can buy a special one, but honestly, if you just get a multi-purpose grease, it'll be fine. And he mentions that you can sort of inject the grease through some sort of hole somewhere, so I don't know where that is, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna pack it inside. Uh, so let's give this one more clean, and then we can... Uh, Put it together gently and see if it if it works. Um, also cleaned up the edge of this. Uh, this all looks fine um, and that's nice and spotless. Well, we'll be spotlessly clean in a few minutes when we wipe it down, um, and then we'll uh, we'll give it a go. Right. So we've got a slight problem here, uh, which is as it turns out, um, these are here are not in fact phosphor bronze bushes. They are actually needle rollers. So I'm just going to uh, show you that. Zoom in on that a little bit. So. In here, uh, this 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 is actually a needle bow bearing as well. I thought I could see some needles down there, and I think that's it's hard to say whether that's disintegrated or not. But it doesn't look great, and I'm not quite sure how to get that out. So I think what I'll do is, well, since we've got the gearbox in parts, I'll basically um, change these as well. Um, unfortunately, the shop's closed, so we'll have to make the video another day. Um, but basically, the way the rest of the, video, the, the way it's going to go back together is that we have um, a push rod goes at the bottom, like that. I think they're not handed; they can go either way up. Then on top of that runs that. Actually, first of all, there's a metal. One of these metal plates goes at the bottom, so that goes at the bottom. Then a push rod, which engages with the uh, the oscillatory part of the head trimmer, then that, then another push rod, then another metal plate, then the gasket. So um, I'm just going to investigate what this bearing is doing and uh, what this uh, bearing is all about in here and see if it has indeed some credit. I don't know how to get those out, so that's going to be interesting. But we'll see and uh, I'll uh, resume the video uh, when uh, when I found them. So it's, yeah, it's that bearing there. So I, I don't know, how, you'll have to figure out a way of getting that out and it does look as if it's got no, no more, uh, I can see that it's falling to pieces in there. So the needle roll is disintegrated too. So we need to get a new one of those as well. So I just thought I'd give a bit more information. So these are indeed definitely needle rollers. So they need to come out. Um, how do I get them out? Well, there's a, a thing called a bearing puller, um, which basically this, this uh, collar goes into the bearing housing. You then tighten it up, which causes, it to, it causes the end to, to flare out. So to grip the bearing, and then attached to that is basically a slide hammer, which I'll show you here. So this then, this part then, just zoom out a little bit so we can have a look at that properly. So that basically um, screws into the top of this, and you can slide this back and forth to, to essentially hammer the bearing out. The problem is, this one I've got is too big, so this won't fit inside. So we'll have to find a way of uh, jamming something into that bearing. Um, so we can pull it out, but I, I dare say I can find one somewhere or find a way and uh, I'll, um, I'll I'll show you the video if I figure out how to do it. So basically the idea is that that would um, squeeze down and push into the into the bearing, but this one just is not gonna is not gonna go, or is it? No, it's just slightly too big, just the wrong size. Anyway, if I find one that fits, I'll, I'll start the video and, and video that. Okay, what we've done now is I've managed to drill very slightly into the bearing, so now my bearing puller will fit inside. So, this is probably awfully bad practice, but we'll see what happens. So I've tightened that up, and I just need to tighten up this bearing puller, so let me just take this off for a sec. It needs to come off here. So that's now fitted into there, which is great. 
So we just need to tighten this up. For that, I think we just need a couple of sockets, or so a couple of spanners, maybe an adjustable. So the idea is that when you tighten up this, um, this puller here, it grips into the inside of the bearing. So we're just gonna tighten this down a bit. Tighten it up, tighten it down, who knows. Let's just see. So that should be flowing out the collar, which it is. That's really solid in there. So, I've never used this tool. I bought it a while back to uh, change the bearings on a motorbike. And didn't use it in the end. But uh, let's see if this works. So the idea is you tighten this up. I'm just gonna zoom out a bit more if I can. And let's see. Well, that came straight out. It didn't rip it at all. So let's, uh, let's try again. So good news, um, I, I persevered with the bearing puller, just tightening it again, and managed to get the bearing out of here. For the other, for the other one, uh, the other side, um, I ended up just um, grinding it with a, a very fine Dremel tool, um, and so it disintegrated the bearing, and then I could basically pull it out of the housing, and all seems fine. So uh, just need to buy uh, two of those little guys, um, and we shall uh, be back in business. So if we have to do that next week, uh, these cost four pounds each, as far as I can tell, and it's just a needle roller. Um, don't think there's anything particularly special about it, but we'll uh, we'll aim to get two of those and, and push fit those into the into the housing. Okay, so the um, the little bearings have turned up. Um, got them from Ron Smith in the end. They're basically uh, they're basically needle caged bearings. Um, I think the part number is ST nine five one three zero zero three one five seven zero. And um, basically, these are the little guys. Um, I'm going to try and zoom in on one of them. Very, very small little bearings. Uh, let's just see if we can get that in the center. Put there. So that's the little bearing. Um, they need to get mounted in two places. Uh, one of them is it needs to be mounted in the, the main uh, kind of head, as it were. So there's a hole there. So I basically cleaned up that hole. I haven't put the bearing into that one yet. Uh, this one here, this is the other part, um, I uh, push fitted the bearing into that. Actually went in pretty easily, so basically I just uh, cleaned it all up with some uh, methylated spirits, uh, put a little bit of grease in and then tapped it in with a bit of dowel and, uh, and um, a mallet. So that's all fine, so we're going to give this one a go and uh, hopefully we'll be able to see this. I'm just going to slightly move the camera so you can get a better view of what I'm doing. So um, I've already cleaned the hole. I'm just going to uh, get another bit of tissue and give it another quick clean, just to make sure. So that's all, uh, all nice and clean in there. Uh, now what I'm going to do is put a little tiny, tiny bit of grease in there. Actually, I think I'll put a bit of... Yeah, a little bit of... Uh, multi-purpose grease uh, which is basically just that so put a bit of multi-purpose grease on the on the bearing there now these these bearings they seem to there's, there's a kind of a relatively flat side that's got writing on it and there's a relatively sort of curvy side so a rounded side so I think the rounded side goes down into there and you're supposed to then tap the uh, the um, flat side, I hope that's right. So we're gonna hopefully this will go in. So I'm gonna just uh, give it a little tap with this hammer here. Seems to, I think that's basically it. I mean, I don't think, I think it needs to be flush with the surface because at the end of the day, um, the next thing that goes on is, is this, there's a shim that goes on, which I think separates the, uh, stops the, uh, the bearing um, fouling on the edge of that. So it's just, uh, you can see, obviously it's designed to, to go around there. You can see there's marks on it. So what we're gonna do is put a little bit of grease, um, I'm gonna clean this up again, because it is of course a gearbox, so you need to keep it clean. So I'm gonna put a bit of grease in there. Okay, and just uh, put that back in there. Spin that around, which I can't, because there's a, can't because there's a gear there. So we'll just, uh, just let it push it in and out a little bit. Let's just put a little bit more packet in there. I think that'll be fine. 
So the next thing we want to do is put in this shim, which goes that way. Next part is um, one of these needle roller on the push rod. So this is quite um, this is the push rod that turns the round and round motion, rotary motion into pushing motion. So you need to be a bit careful with this. So I'm going to take that plug out and I'm just going to zoom out so you can see a little bit of a wider angle of what I'm doing. So we're going to pack this bearing with a bit of grease. A little bit more of that. And that's then going to go on there. These don't seem to have a a particular side, I don't think, any way up. So that's going to go in there. He says it's just fallen off, but that's fine. I need to get this to locate. There we go. So that's that's fine. That's on there. And the next thing. our actual hedge trimmer blade. Now we may have to reposition all this a bit so I'm just going to pause the video and then uh, start it again in a slightly different position so you can see what's going on. Right so I've slightly uh, slightly repositioned the camera so you can see see what's happening here hopefully. So what happens now is uh, this is the, the cutter blade so we're just going to put a little bit of grease on that We'll pack the whole thing with grease later, but let's just put a bit of grease on there and a little bit of grease. Let's just quickly whip this out a sec. Put a bit more grease on it. Or we can put some grease through the hole actually. So I think the whole whole bearings, the whole gearbox is packed with grease anyway. So we're going to put a bit of grease all over that so it can slide nicely. Okay. The next thing to go on is the blade. So this blade, um, if the gearbox is facing the way it is, um, the cutter blade goes with the the nuts pointing, I think, down that way, I believe. So, so you want the screw uh, heads on the top and the nuts on the bottom. So that just locates neatly there. That's fine. And then we can put these, these two uh, hex bolts in there, just to hold it in place. Actually, I think they're Torx, actually, not hex. So we're just going to tighten those up loosely. I'm just going to find the set of Torx bits. So we can tighten that up. That holds the blade in place. We'll tighten those up a bit more in a minute. And then if I'm not mistaken, that piece goes in there. Okay, I'm not quite sure what that's for. Actually, let's just tighten these up all the way. I don't think there's any reason not to, so I'm just going to tighten that up. Okay, then we're going to put the next uh, the next push rod in. So again, you've got to be a bit careful that you don't uh, lose the, the needle rollers out of this. So that's what that little plastic thing does hold that in place. So we're going to put a bit of grease again around here. And let's pack a bunch of grease onto the uh, drive that comes up through the gearbox there, so I think that's probably enough. Let's move a little bit more. That's all pretty good. So that push rod now wants to go on here, and that needs to engage with that, um, that piece there. So it's, it's not quite in alignment, so what we need to do is just very carefully without cutting our fingers off, slide this around a bit. So it wants to go a little bit out. So I'm just going to gently push that with the screwdriver. OK. 
Okay, that's all good. We can put that back on there again. There we are, that's all fitted rather nicely. Okay, and then there was the, the other shim. Just gonna put, again, a bit more grease just in there. All that mechanism. A little bit more. So the shim goes on next. You can, again, you can see the marks where it's been rotating, that's fine. It goes on there, I think. Then we've got the gasket. Which goes that way up. Then the top bit of the housing. Now I've already, I've already put some grease on there, but I'm just gonna put a little bit more just in there. And a little bit more just in here. Okay. That's fine. All being well, I just need to tighten this up. And that's not quite locating down there. Why is that not going down? There we go. That's fine. It's got a. There was a pin. Just had to. It's a location pin just in there. Just had to clip around that. And then we've basically got uh, just these uh, these six uh, torques. Wants to tighten up. And then we'll give it a go outside. So these just get tightened up. Um, I don't think they want to be incredibly tight. Um, the way I always do this is just to um, tighten them sort of diagonally first. So I've tightened that one up first, not just finger tight, just to make sure that we don't distort the uh, aluminium casing. So let's just pinch that one up. Then I think we'll go over here for this one. We can tighten them up properly in a minute. So we could probably edit this bit out, it's somewhat dull. But really that's, um, so assuming that you've got the parts um, in stock as it were, that's a really straightforward job. Um, that if I'd had uh, just all the parts without too many pauses and that sort of thing, I would say 30 minutes, absolute max. Um, if you're gonna change um, the push rods with the bearings in them, I'd suggest that you at the same time change the, the main needle bearings in there as well. Um, the I think the total price is about uh, I think there are 20 pounds each for the push rods and then 10 pounds for the bearings. So 50 pounds is what you need in half an hour's labour. So so if, I would say if, if a, a mechanic um, is charging a reasonable rate, it will be maybe 80 pounds for the job. You know, 60 pounds an hour, so 30 pounds for half an hour's work. Um, if he's charging you more than that, I'd say he's ripping you off. Um, I don't know what the market rate is for this sort of thing. And I said, absolutely, totally the sort of thing you can do yourself. Um, and uh, so I'm just gonna nip these up and then uh, give it a test run. But um, there you go, that's how you change the, the push rods with the bearings and the main bearings in the, in the gearbox, at the, the cutting head of a uh, still high level head trimmer. I think it was an HS100 uh, is what it's called. So we're gonna give it a go. And, uh, and I'll tell you at the end how, how it went. So I'm just going to double check this time, but it all looks good. We don't want to over tighten these because uh, there's no need at all. And that is that. So after um, about three hours of head trimming, having changed the, the bearings and the push rods, I'm going to take this apart and see if it all looks okay. Having never done this before, I thought it was a good idea to have a look at what's happening inside the gearbox. The gearbox is nice and cool, so it's not hot. Um, I mean, when I first used it, when, when the bearings all seized up, it was very hot, the, the gearbox. So we're just taking the cover off very carefully. And uh, that side, there's the, the gasket. I mean, it all looks fine, really. So, uh, yeah, I think obviously the, the grease has moved around a bit inside there. But I think we're, we're fine. Um, yeah, I think that's basically fine. So I'm just going to put a little bit more grease inside. Um, there's no no issue with that at all and then I think that's a, a job well done so uh, as I said that's how you you change the the bearings and the push rods which you've got uh, needle rollers inside needle bearings inside on a, a still HS uh, 100 high level hedge trimmer so yep it all looks looks as if it's perfect so a little bit more grease 
think it won't do any harm. And uh, I think we've we've done a great job there. So it just goes back on there. It's the little shim. Keep it nice and clean. And uh, it's the the gasket. And then it goes in there, on there. Perfect. So that is a, a job well done. I'll just tighten those up. You've seen me tighten up on the previous uh, part of the video, so I won't bore you with that, but all looking very good indeed. Uh -huh.